What's up guys, I'm Darren Jackson. Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you had a great Christmas and hopefully you're preparing for a happy new year. And the question of the day is, how'd you guys do this year investment wise? I'm gonna be honest with you, Darren, cause I felt like that question was specifically for me. And uh, I did pretty fabulous this year. Oh, you did, you did fabulous? That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know if you remember that video that we made a couple of weeks ago that I'm going to put right up there also for the sake of making sure that I persuade people to watch it so we can gain some view time, but that's neither here nor there. I actually did say that I made a $10 profit this year. $10, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah, I know I sold all my stocks. It probably wasn't the greatest idea. I mean, honestly, I, wouldn't, I don't think I would have sold all my stocks. But at the same time, maybe it was the greatest idea. Okay, all right. So now that we know how he did, I want to use this video, I guess, to be a little more selfish to talk about how I did this year. For those of you guys that have actually followed the majority of my videos, at least since I started this channel this year, will know that hopefully I've came a long way and hopefully my videos helped you guys as well, even the slightest bit. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how I did financially with my stock portfolios and some of the goals that I have, or at least all the financial goals that I have for next year, and some of the goals that I have for this channel, since this is a stock market channel, or at least a stock investment journey channel, I want to express to you guys some of the goals that I have for this channel as well that will hopefully just help out overall. So let's get started with the financial goals and talk about some of those portfolios. So I have this Robinhood account, and I think my primary use for this account ultimately would be for like a large deposit that I'm gonna make onto something. So for example, if I wanna put a down payment on a home, I have the option to take the funds out of this account to put it towards it. But hopefully, ideally, I don't touch this for a while. I'm ultimately trying to also use this account to grow dividends. So it'd be very awesome to be able to live slightly off dividends where I have enough money every month to pay off bills or something like that. But we'll see what happens in the future. Now, I have had this account for about a year and a half, but this was the first full year of me investing seriously through Robinhood, and I actually did pretty well. I made almost 8% for this entire year. Mind you, I'm recording this on Tuesday, so we still have at least one more trading day, not including today, but that's where I'm at this point. So I'm looking at almost a $300 profit, which was great, and I have a lot of stocks within my 30 plus stock portfolio with Robinhood. If you guys want information about that, then I'll link these two videos. One is just me talking about every single stock, which was a couple of months ago. And the other one was my top 10 stocks of this year. The bulk of them being from this portfolio, which I brought out on Monday. So definitely check that out. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I did have an Acorns account for probably a year at least. I think I set it up last year. And honestly, there was one major reason why I set up the debit aspect of it metal i would definitely say i learned a lot but i mean it was an experience and if you guys want to learn more about the acorns investing app and what i did like about it and why i left anyway then i'll link that video up above but i ended up taking that money out i want to say in november and i end up putting it into my m1 finance account and i set up this m1 finance account around june and similar to my robin hood account my goal with the m1 finance account ultimately is to use it towards maybe some other type of large deposit. Obviously not necessarily as large as Robinhood because I have more money in Robinhood. But for example, whenever I decide to buy a new car, I can use this money as a down payment if I choose to. Otherwise, I ideally want to keep it in there. But as far as this M1 Finance account, I honestly set it up primarily to have an excuse to invest in Tesla. Now, I've never had enough money to comfortably invest in a full stock in Tesla. I started back when Tesla was around $1,000, but I am able to dollar cost average into it. So from the point of when I opened this account to right before I closed my Acorns account, I was investing about $10 a week into the account and I have three stocks in it. One being Tesla, which gets about 34% of my deposits. And the other two being QQQ, which is an ETF that gets a quarterly dividend, has a long experience of growth and tracks the NASDAQ 100, which is beneficial for me because some of the top stocks within the NASDAQ 100 are tech stocks like Apple, Tesla, I believe, Microsoft, stuff like that. And those have been doing really well this year, I'll probably do really well for a very long time. And I have Johnson & Johnson, which has an experience of having some steady growth. It has a high cash balance, which is really beneficial. And on top of that, it's rated as a dividend king, which means that not only has it paid out dividends, 
but I believe it's also increased its dividends consecutively for the past 50 years. There's not a lot of stocks that have that or are rated that. So it's really beneficial for me to have that as the dividend yield. And since I've had this portfolio, my returns have been over 65%, so almost $150 up until this point, which is crazy, primarily due to Tesla, which has grown over 200%. So I'm really happy to have this, and I'll continue to dollar cost average into this, which as of now, I'm doing $20 a week after I close the Acorns account, which I was doing $10 a week. So I'm saving money and putting it towards here. And we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, so now we've talked about how I did this year. I'm definitely glad that I invest into the stock market this year, this being my first full year of investing seriously. And I could have done a lot better, but I obviously could have done a lot worse, especially if I you know, never invested at all. But I definitely have a lot of financial goals for next year and things that I wanna do that I didn't really do this year that will hopefully help me exceed the profits that I made this year. So as far as my financial goals, I wanna to continue to be able to budget throughout the entire year 2021 to where I can continue investing $50 a week into my Robinhood account and $20 a week into my M1. Obviously, if I have the opportunity to increase it and still be comfortable as far as finances and paying bills, then I will for both. But I wanted to continue doing that at least. I would love to be able to, what a lot of people claim to do is beat the stock market, meaning that the returns on my portfolio will be higher than an index fund that tracks a lot of stocks, including the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. But that's gonna require me to look and do a lot of research on additional stocks that other people may not be taking advantage of. Speaking of research, one side thing that I want to get more comfortable with and gain more of a habit of doing is looking at the balance sheets of a lot of stocks. So these balance sheets, if I'm correct, are given out every single quarter whenever that stock releases its uh, EPS and other stuff like that. It's made public so people like you and I, as stockholders like you and I, have the opportunity to see how that company is doing, which will give us the mindset to either sell our stocks, buy in if we haven't yet, or buy more. So I wanna get comfortable with doing that. Once I do, I'll definitely make a video breaking that down, maybe in an investing term segment. So hopefully you guys can understand as much as I have. And I mentioned this before, but I'm also using this Robinhood account to grow dividends, which I would hope to use to pay off certain things like bills and stuff like that in the future. But right now I'm just reinvesting into the portfolio. At this point, I think I'm making about $120 a year off dividends, which is amazing for pretty much not doing anything except investing but I would love to get to about $200 by the end of next year, which would be great. But I obviously wanna do it the right way, meaning I wanna invest in companies that have a trend of capital growth, not just dividends, because if they don't have growth, the opportunity for them to reduce or cancel their dividends is even higher. So I wanna make sure I do that. And I also have goals for this YouTube channel. It's not necessarily financial goals, but this is a finance-based channel. I'll be honest with you guys, when I first started this channel, probably just like a lot of people, the reasons why I started the channel were kinda of out of line. Honestly, if I had to write it down, which I did, the very first reason I started this channel back in January was to have a second source of income. But that would mean I would need to hit certain goals to achieve monetization within that channel. I ultimately forgot the bigger reason why I wanted to start this channel in the first place. And that's to help people. That's to help people and to express my interest in finances. You know, I worked at a bank for six years, and even though I was a teller, I was barely scratching the surface of finances. But I love being able to learn a lot about finances and use what I've learned to help people and to more importantly help myself. And that made me really interested in investing, which I played around with for the past couple of years, but didn't really get serious about it until earlier this year or last year, I mean, when I set up my Robinhood account. I also wanted to share my journey with you guys and more importantly, use the lessons that I've learned as a new investor to help you guys that are approaching that boundary or haven't invested yet. And that's my new goal for this channel. I wanna use this channel to again, talk about a lot of the things that I'm learning as I'm learning them in hopes that it helps you guys with something that you haven't quite approached yet. And maybe you can deal with it, whatever that issue is, I might have dealt with better than I did. There's been a lot of times where I would focus on the analytics so much with all the videos that I've made financial based. And it got to the point where I was making certain videos that I was cool with making, but I wasn't too crazy about. 
and they did really well and that was kind of the problem because then i'm doing a disservice to the people that have newly subscribed to my channel they're expecting more of those certain videos and i may not want to make those videos again then they don't see them again and they unsubscribe so the new rule i have for this channel is of course i'm going to be making finance-based channels and the goal is to make finance-based channels that help new investors and that encourage people that really have considered investing to actually do it. But my new thing is if I don't enjoy the process of thinking of the idea, taking the notes on the idea, recording it, and if I don't have fun editing it and being excited for when it comes out, then I won't do it. Regardless of how many views I get that day, a hundred, a billion, 10, if I have fun, then people will be able to notice that because at the end of the day, there are billions of people, well, maybe not billions, but there are a lot of people that talk about the same topic that I'm talking about. But hopefully you guys are subscribing to me or at least me being one of the people you subscribe to out of those X amount of people because of my personality on top of the fact that I'm talking about things that you're interested in. And I can't show my personality if I don't enjoy the content. So I wanna make sure I do that. But always, I always encourage you guys to leave comments below. Let me know if there's any questions you may have. And I'll definitely love to answer those questions in future videos because my goal is to help you guys and you guys to help me in return. We're all learning together. So that's my YouTube goal for this year and the things that I want to achieve financially. And if I do achieve them, I'll hopefully help you guys as well. But to all you guys that actually subscribe to my channel, whether you're new, or you subscribed in January 16th when I made this channel. I just wanna say thank you so much for being on this journey with me. This is just the beginning. We haven't even reached a year yet, so hopefully you will stick around and grow with me on this, again, investing journey. So I appreciate you guys for watching for the last time in 2020. I'll see you guys next year. Happy New Year and take care.